polonium crystallizes in a basic cube crystal lattice. I have a picture of the basic cube on the left. The density of polonium is 9.144 grams per centimeter cubed. What's the radius of one atom in angstroms? And what's the volume of the atom in cc's? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and write down some of the information that's not explicit here but is implicit. For example, the molar mass of polonium is 209 grams per mole. So we always want to recognize that. That might be helpful because we were given the name of the element. The other thing that's important is that we remember certain units like what is an angstrom? An angstrom is a unit that is often used to measure uh, atoms or the radius of the atom. So make sure we remember that one angstrom is 1 times 10 to the minus 10th meters. That should be memorized. Okay, and then here we have our cubic unit cell. And so if we look at the edge, that would be A. A equals 2R. So these are the things that that we know um, just by the, the other information that's, that's kind of implicit here. All right, so what is the radius of one atom? So hmm, what we're going to need to do is um, we're going to have to do this in steps. So the first thing we really should figure out is the volume of the unit cell. Um, once we figure the volume of the unit cell, then we can uh, take the cube root of that, and that will give us the edge, right? And then we divide that by 2, because we know that A equals 2R, and that will give us the radius. And then um, once we know the radius, uh, that will answer the first question. Then we can take 4 thirds pi R cubed, right? And that will give us the volume of the atom. So this will kind of help us here. Um, help us, give us a guide. Because these problems are kind of difficult, we really need, uh, we really need to come up with a problem-solving strategy. Okay, so if we're going to figure out first the volume of the unit cell, that's going to be uh, centimeters cubed per one unit cell. So I'm just going to go ahead and write that out like that. And I want to work up to these units because that will give me the volume of the unit cell. All right, so do I know anything with those? Well, I certainly do. I know the density. And so I'm going to flip the density over, and I'm going to say that 1 centimeter cubed is 9.144 grams. I did that because I want centimeters cubed on top. Remember that when we're dealing with density, we're dealing with the density of the unit cell, not the density of the atom. As you can see, the unit cell takes into account all of the empty space, whereas the density of the atom would just be pure matter. Or, you know, the atom too is empty space, but we're adding empty space when we look at the unit cell. All right, so now I need to get rid of grams. And if you look up top here, we have the density. So I'm going to go ahead and put the density here. I'm going to get rid of grams, and that's going to bring in moles. And as you know, when we're dealing with moles, that helps us get to atoms. So this is going to be 209 grams per one mole. All right, now I can get rid of moles. And we know that moles is a certain number of atoms. So I'm going to use 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms per mole. So again, we're just letting the units guide us. All right, now I've gotten rid of moles and gotten rid of grams. Uh, I really want to get unit cell. So if I remember correctly, if we look up here, 
we have this simple cube. We should have written this down earlier because this is another implicit important piece of information is that there is one atom in the simple cube per one unit cell. All right, so that's going to give us one atom per unit cell. And again, we have to know that because we have our simple cube. All right, so then when we uh, work all of this out, we get a volume of the unit cell, which is 3.80 times 10 to the minus 23rd. Now that's the whole thing, and we have to keep into account that when we're going from density to volume, that's going to give us the volume of the unit cell, not the atom. And students often get confused with that. Okay, so now we can go to the edge. Um, we can take the cube root of our volume, right? So 3.80 times 10 to the minus 23 centimeters cubed. I'm going to take the cube root of that and that is going to give me the edge which is 3.36 times 10 to the minus 8 centimeters. Okay so that's a length and usually the magnitude is 10 to the minus 8 for length. 10 to the minus 23 or 10 to the minus 22 is often a volume. So keep that in mind. This is about the right length. Okay, this is the um, this is this is the edge. Okay, so now what I want to do is divide this by two. I'm not going to put an equal sign here because that wouldn't be equal. I'm going to start over. I'm going to divide by two, and this is going to give me my radius, which is 1.68 times 10 to the minus 8 centimeters. This is the radius. Again, I know that 2 radii is, are, is equal to one of the edges of my unit cell. Okay, so now I need to convert this to angstroms because that's what we were asked to do. So 1.68 times 10 to the minus 8 centimeters I'm going to change from centimeters to meters, so I need to remember that conversion, and then I need to remember the conversion that one angstrom, and that's the symbol for angstrom A with a little halo for you angel fans, and that is 10 to the minus tenth meters. So if I flip this up 10 to the tenth, I get uh, 1.68 times 10 to the minus 8, times 10 to the minus 2, times 10 to the 10th. It comes out to be 1.68 angstroms. And this equals the radius in angstroms. Okay, the last thing we're asked to do is figure out the volume of the atom. And the question says we want the volume in centimeters cubed, not angstroms. So we should remember that volume for a sphere, the atom, is going to be 4 thirds pi r cubed. So this is going to equal 4 thirds pi times 1.68 times 10 to the minus 8 and that quantity cubed. This gives us 1.99 times 10 to the minus 23rd centimeters cubed. This equals the volume of one atom. So it's important to distinguish between the volume of the atom and the volume of the unit cell. So let's take a look. You would think that the volume of the atom would be less than the volume of the unit cell. Let's see if in fact that is true. 
So this is the volume of one atom. And up here, we have the volume of one unit cell. And you can see that um, the volume of the atom is indeed smaller than the unit cell. We could divide the volume of the atom by the unit cell times 100 and get the packing efficiency, which isn't very high for the simple cube.